We got a special guest in the building, ladies and gentlemen. A special guest in the building. This is for trap trap and turn smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rapper. Got hey, balls hey, like hey, a hey, hand hey, the backpack is dropped all hey. Yeah, how you doing, Salute. man? Nice to see you, bro. Nice to see you, man. I, I'm I appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it. First and What's foremost, good? first and foremost, man. Yo, listen. I, I said that at the beginning of my show, so this ain't no cap. If you watch the beginning, I said you are one of my top three favorite podcasts to watch, man. I'm proud of what you're doing. Thank I, you, sir. Came a long way from knocking niggas out on stage to now out here, uh, and potentially, potentially about the sign million dollar deals man so man keep it keep it going man keep doing your thing Thank you, bro i appreciate that and, and much success to you also man much success to you also man i just want to see everybody eat man that's right. it right and and um from, from my perspective and i don't know how you, you want to go with this but what i'm looking at what space ghost is doing and what the other gentlemen are doing i, I kind of can't rock with it man um um you're a growing platform, right? And I think people need to give you an opportunity at least to be able to understand certain things that's going on. Right. I, I you got people coming at you left and right, and you're still trying to figure it out, right? And right. I don't know whether you're a businessman or not. I don't. I don't understand that because I know you know. I know you, where you come from. You come from Brooklyn. You come from the streets, and right. people, people people are jumping the gun and not really allowing you to make the mistakes that you need to make. You know, it, it, it's cool because you know. Um. Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. I come from the streets. But so did Jay-Z. I think we lost him. I think we lost him. I think we lost Math Hoffa. Damn. Mic check, mic check. Is it me? Please don't tell me my computer won't act up now. Hold on. Behind the bar. Is it me or can y'all see him? Did he freeze? Yo. Okay, okay, I see you now. You froze up for a minute. I can hear you now. Yeah, I was saying, um, you know, I know certain people love to sell that artists are not businessmen, but um it's that's not true. There's plenty of artists out there that do good business who have mastered business and they're doing very well for themselves. And to be honest, a lot of this this industry might not exist without artists. You know what I'm saying? I, I follow the, the 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 steps of of Joe Budden, uh, of of Nori, and I'll never I'll never take that away from them. That I saw what they did, and I said, "Oh wow, that's amazing, that's amazing." Maybe I can maybe I can create something like that. And to be mentioned amongst the ranks of them now, today, after just three years of podcasting, I feel blessed. You know, but like my life coach says, with all these blessings. There comes a test. There comes uh, uh, new levels, new devils. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and some, it's unfortunate that things had to go this way. They've been off the show for two months. For two months. I, I don't, until they said something, I don't even think people noticed as much. Like I dropped the Joe Bud. The, the Joel Ortiz and Crooked Eye episode. I dropped the Rich Homie Quan episode. I dropped the Ma. I love you, but I hate your ringtone. I hate your ringtone, Ma. I, I, I really do. <laughs> I got my Ma in the back. <laughs> Her phone keep going off. She got this weird ass ringtone, bro. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, like, um, on this. You good, Ma? Yeah. Um, you 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 wanna order the food for the kids? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. All right, Ma, Mama Love just wanna sit in on this one because she's been tight. She wanted to go get the hammer and come see people. I was like, Ma, we can't do that. <laughs> we can't do that, Ma. We gonna mess up the bag, man. We not gonna do that. Don't do that. Um, Don't end up with three half stupid ass. But go ahead, I'm listening. Right, right. So, so it's unfortunate that it went down the way it did. 
I kept my mouth closed because I didn't, I, I didn't want to slander nobody. You know, if, if that's what they wanted to do, they wanted to have their own platform, then go have your own platform. I'm going to just continue doing my thing. But I did see there was a there was issues with me not telling people publicly that they were no longer associated with the show because they were still using the name of the show to get in the events, to 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 get people to to give them stuff, sponsors, all types of shit. So I'm like, all right, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I guess they felt like I was staying quiet because you know I was negotiating situations or whatever. But it wasn't even about that. Like mm. the people I'm negotiating with, they they just love the show. And they know that the show has had different hosts. And I guess that's why a lot of people didn't notice that they weren't on the show anymore. You right. know what I mean? Right, because you, you rotate a bunch of men over around. Like, you rotate. So I think that's what's organic about your show because it's not stale. You got it. You hear it in a different perspective from different people. And I'm be honest with you. I never heard of an ESO before. I heard of right. I, I heard of Heineken back in the day with This Is 50, but right. it's been relevant for at least a decade. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. From my perspective, how I'm looking at it is that you're giving these people opportunities. And by you even clearly saying that these people even have the opportunity to get in certain events and do certain things based upon them being on your platform should be a blessing in themselves. You know what I mean? Right. And, and people are being so greedy. And when they hear the money, because according to Space Coast, he said he knew how much money that you was getting. So obviously he was pocket watching you. So yeah, whatever yeah definitely. I, and, I, and I think that's where that's that's part of where it started. Um. You know, when, when they signed contracts, we wasn't at the level that we was. I've been busting my ass. Like, I'm dying for a vacation. Dying for a vacation. Mm. I've been busting my ass, going going out to meet people, mixing and mingling in circles, and, and, and getting people, getting guests on the show. You know what I mean? SO and Heineken, you know, they they played their roles, but for, for as much as they talk about the industry connections they have, they only brought two guests to the show in that whole time that it was there. Let me tell and you. I'm sorry, go ahead. It, it kind of bothered me to see them sit there like everybody that came on, we have relationships with too. Like, so what do you think? I didn't have relationships with them. Like, like, well, how, how does that work? You know what I'm saying? You, you're seeing Clark Kent talking about young math Hoff and how your know, half used to be sitting in the studio with me and i used to sick him on rappers they used to come through and try to play their demos be me saying yo i i wanted to sign this kid when he was young but he was too much of you know what i mean he, he was too too much of a headache you know what i'm saying mm. so I've, I've i've been making my bones in the industry also the show would have probably died if i had to rely on on the battle rappers that i originally wanted the show to be about battle rap but I had enough connections to reach out to people and have them come through before these guys even came on, on, on the set, the subscriber thing. I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to just debate everything that they said. I just want to put out there. The one thing that they did not say in that hour and 45 minutes was we violated the contracts and that's why we're not on the show. Mm. Wow. We went behind his back. We got a sponsor. I don't know if it was off my name or theirs. Cool. If it's off yours, cool. If it was off mine, we foul. But they got a sponsor, and they went and created another show where they interview guests during my expert opinion. We have contracts. The contract said there's an exclusivity arrangement in this. You cannot. You cannot go do any other shows. Wow. You cannot create another you cannot create another show that we're not involved in. If I bring you onto my platform and I expose you to this huge audience, whether you want to believe that you you brought more people there or whatever, or, or you know what I mean, and, and exclude that I had anything to do with it, because I'm not gonna exclude that they had anything to do with it. But I will say you're not the defining factor. My mm. my subscribers are still going up despite them saying, Oh, his subscribers are gonna go down now. They're still going up. Yeah, th th that's them trying to manipulate you. And, and listen, any fool can see that you're actually elevating. You got people like Funk Master Flex reaching out to you. We need music. We, have, we want to play your music on New York radio and everything like that. And we see, you know, a lot of things going on. Even them, I kind of want to ask you a question about them. You you, you said on to Queen's Flip that mm -hmm. they used to, re 
artist management used to try to reach out to you to have their artists come on your show, and they used to black tell them that you're booked to go find somewhere else. But you never, you never saw was, whether it was Space Ghost or Esso or, or Heineken. Or, there was a situation. I know that um certain people used to hit them up and be like, "Yo, um, what's up with math?" And with me, you you you're not getting on the show unless I get to screen like the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So if I if I can't talk to you before you come on the show, nine times out of ten, it's not gonna happen. Mm, okay. Because I have to I have to decide whether I want to sit across from you for we lost him again. Mike check, Mike check. Still here? Yeah, yeah, we there, we there. All right. So I know people people in the past have tried to reach out to them to get to me. And there was a situation where someone's manager reached out to me and we were like, yeah, we want to do that. And then all of a sudden he ended up on a platform with them. And I was like, well, how did, how did that work? Mm. And I told him to reach out and see what's up and come to find out. Yeah. They did speak with them. And they and the and the word is that they said that that we were booked up or the episode ain't gonna come out in time or whatever, so it'd be better for them to go over and sit with Clue. Mm. And I'm like, wow, wow, word. That makes okay. sense. That makes sense. I heard the guy Esso saying that can, Space Ghost is now going to be producing for DJ Clue, and they're going to be his co-hosts and shit like that. And it seems that's, like you know, not, I'm not that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fine. I just hope Clue knows who he's dealing with. Mm. You know, this is somebody that I made sure was paid before I was making money. Wow. I made sure I because because of what he went through with Queens Flip. And Flip broke it down to me. Flip still gave me the reference, like, yo, yes, work with Space Ghost. He's good at what he does. And he came on. I made sure from day one Space Ghost was paid. Wow. That's crazy. And he didn't have no problems with that. I wasn't making money. So for you to turn around and see, oh, this nigga's making money. Oh, I need more. You didn't take a short when I wasn't making no money. Wow. wow that's deep. That's deep. Um, I remember the first time I saw you interviewing somebody, and I knew that you had it in you. Um, I know obviously you remember it was. You interviewed Queen's Clip during the interrogation room during that whole jihad situation. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I mean, did you have any experience doing that type of interview and stuff before that day? Because you, you came at you came at the at the situation from an unbiased perspective, and you actually told Flip about himself that where he was wrong at. Is that right. your first time ever really interviewing somebody back then, or or you've been doing? No, that? I mean, I mean, when you come from a certain background, you gotta you gotta read people like it, like. Forget what someone's saying out of their mouth. Forget the the sound of their voice. You got to watch their body language. Everything that they're doing is going to tell you how they really feel. Mm. And and coming from a certain background, like certain niggas in jail, jail niggas, are, they, they'll tell you, like, like, forget what a nigga's saying. You got to watch everything. You dig what I'm saying? And I come from a background, you know, just being in the streets and 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 interact with, interacting with certain individuals i just had to learn how to read people oh. and i used to sell you know i used to sell coke so i'd be talking to coke heads all night so it's not a you know what i mean <laughs> they love to talk my nigga they love right. to talk so right. it, you know it is what it is right but, right but even through battle rap i did so many interviews and i just i guess i don't know I, but I've always been the guy that people would call and reach out to for like advice or if it, if they were down or if they wanted to build something like I've always been that person. So I guess that that came really natural for me. You know, what I mean, there was some growing pains at first because I had to understand, you know, the entertainment side of it and how sometimes when you're talking to somebody off camera, it's a it's a certain type of conversation and when the camera comes on you might see a change in that person and you you know i just had to adjust to that you know what i mean but, but otherwise yeah it, it's it's always been there i just didn't realize it until i decided until i did that episode and the first three comments was yo math hoffa needs a podcast right now facts facts right 
I seen that. I remember, that's the day you met Jen. I remember that day like it was yesterday. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember, I'll, I'll, trust me, you see, I'll be watching. Um, Thanks. Something that you said, um, I, 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 I hold you with a lot of integrity when you said that. I gained more respect for you when you said that. A lot of people mm-hmm. like the Tony Ayo interview because of how it was controversy and niggas were screaming and yelling at each other. But you said you don't want your platform to be built on that type of stuff. You don't want that. Yeah, I, don't, I don't want niggas to think, yo, oh, we we go we go come through and yell like that's not like nah. That we we have enough issues communicating with each other. I wanted to always showcase that that we could sit down, we could have differences in in opinions, and we could talk it out. You know what I'm saying? I want to show people like, yo, yeah, you you could do this with your people. You know what I mean? Y'all could talk about shit. It doesn't have to get uh, heated. It doesn't have to turn into a fight or anything like that. Even though the last episode I did, it almost did do that. Um, shout out to Smith and Wesson. But um, you know, even even with that, I was able to get the brothers together and apologize to each other, and that'll be on the end of the episode. But we cut the cameras during during the shoot because it got really heated wow wow yeah y'all... But that's not my goal my goal is not the drama the drama is a trend so you look at a brother like charleston white if he's not dissing somebody you're probably not gonna watch him at this point that's a fact you know what i mean because he's made that his his niche drama so he has to keep rehearsing enemies or 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 or, or reing up on enemies and people that he got to talk talk negative about or you're not going to pay attention to him because that's basically where he goes with it. you know what i mean wow i agree with you 100 i agree with you right yeah I, I i like the moves that you're making man you over there on vlad tv man i think that's a great look for you you know what i'm saying the elevator yeah, vlad, vlad is the homie uh, yeah vlad listen listen i'm i'm not one of those guys that's going to sit back and Bad, bash bad, you know what I mean? I would like to be on Vlad one day too. So, you know, right, I, right. I'm not mad at what he's doing. Don't hate the player, hate the game at the end of the day. And he's doing what he's doing, and it is what it is, you know. And you know, I don't know if people remember this, but me and Vlad started a battle league together. Oh, oh I didn't know that. Yeah, I had a I had a I had some issues with URL after doing that, but you know what I'm saying? We gave it a try. It was okay. called it was called the Killers Battle League, and me and T-Rex battled for the second time on on that lead mm, okay i didn't even know that i just learned something about you today Word. Okay. but vlad, vlad i want to matter of fact i want to say shout out to vlad because he was introducing me at that time to everyone when i say everyone i mean like buster rhymes jerry wonder um any artists any important people in the industry that we would come across while we were out with each other he would be like, "Yo, this is this guy is gonna be the biggest thing to come out of battle rap," and so far, so far he's accurate. You know what I mean? Like, shout out to all my peers, but you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna dim my light and say that that I, I haven't reached a level where I feel comfortable in saying, right now, this is the level. You think right. what I'm saying? This is where I would like to see my peers get to. Right. You know what I mean? Independent, right. making money, taking care of your family, not having to worry about battles, not having to chase the check anymore. You know what I'm saying? But just let the check come to you mm. independently. Real talk. I heard you on um on Clubhouse earlier with that's the cloud chasing. You were saying that they, they asked you about are you going to replace those two gentlemen? You was like you're going to have you may have different guests come in and and get them maybe like a check or whatever to come in or whatever to come in right. and see if you can have a vibe with them right right my question to you is i know I'm, I'm shooting right now but somebody like me who's a small podcaster do somebody like a small smaller youtubers have an opportunity to come, come up there and have an opportunity to chop it up with you or you're looking at people that have already have a big name um i'm i'm kind of looking at now i'm looking at people who have a name because you know i see how somebody could come on your platform and kind of scheme on taking your juice right. and trying to go do their own thing. So I would want somebody who's for one more versed than what 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 the last guys were talking about, or or have more experience in the industry, so we can always get that perspective, that extra set of knowledge. And but for for podcasters that may not be on that level, I will be offering situations where. 
you know, I'll, I'll fund 10 episodes. And within that 10 episodes, if it hits, then I can offer you a contract after that. You dig what I'm saying? You ever thought about having some of these guys intern and, and not always having to pay these people? Because at the end of the day, you're a growing platform and it's, it's an opportunity at the end of the day. Do you always have to pay people right out the door? Well, I, I believe that you should pay people out the door. I mean, if you don't got it and you got a you got a strong team and you trust each other, then you do that. But for the most part, when things go south, the first thing people want to talk about is money. Like, even though these guys were well taken care of, they're talking about money like it was the issue. It was not the issue. They violated their contract. Simple as that. And then that whole four, I, I went 45 minutes. I didn't hear nobody say we violated the contract. Mm. Wow. And that's whack. Because now you're trying to slander me. You're, you're, you're trying to trying to um put put this 2.7 million. Like, like, bro, like. Right. Why would you even throw that out there? If you don't know it to be accurate information, why would you even throw that out there? It's to set you up, Matt. You, you said it clearly. You're still in the hood. It may look good. You're still in the hood. And, you know, if people hear them type of numbers, man, you, they put your family in danger at the end of the day, man. They're playing games. Yeah, like, like, what are you doing? Like, even even if I was to sign a, a deal to that magnitude or, or higher, you know, I would tell these guys, yo, give me some time to move. You know what I'm saying? Like, Right. They just get before you announce this shit. Like, let me get the fuck out of Dodge. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. these niggas is crazy, and it's not even it's not even accurate what they're throwing out there. Mm. But that's to show the mentality of these guys, and how they just been pocket watching the whole time and just scheming. Like, that's messed up, man. That's messed up. Not only are they pocket watching, they're subscriber watching. Homeboy was saying how when he first started on your show back in January, how you had such 200 or something thousand subscribers. And that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. We was past that. Mm. We was past that. So you tell me I went up I went up a half a million subscribers in one year. That's what you're trying to say. That's what he's trying to say, man. He's throwing that allegations out there, man. All right, cool. Uh, and and if if you contributed to that, I'm grateful. I'm grateful, but don't ever forget that the show was moving already. That's why you guys came on the show and was working for free. I'm the one who came to you and said, nah, I like this. I like this team. I want to pay y'all. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to get contracts. Because you put, yeah. Because you put a gun to their head and told them they got to come up every, every day and not get paid. Right. You forced them to come up there. Right. Yeah. And that's <laughs> the funny thing. Like you, you were working for free. Now the problem is the money. You, wow. were, you was working for free. Now the problem is the money. Yo, I never How does that heard. That makes sense. Yeah, I never heard of a man not answering his text messages and the phone calls when you got the bag for them. I, like I never heard of no shit like that. And but yeah, but I mean, for for Space Ghost, if that's your character, and that's something I dealt with for three years, it wasn't like that in the beginning. Obviously, I would have been like, oh no, nah, I got to find somebody else. But in time, like, and I think it was because he saw the show growing and he just felt the way about it. And rather than saying, yo, math, uh, I want to renegotiate or math, I want to do this or math, I want to do that. Or even holding out like your space, I'm going to take care of you. Just let me let me get us on, on a network. Let, let me make something happen. Because I don't know if you notice, like not being on the network, you kind of miss out on certain things. Me and, and Joe Budden, why weren't we in the podcast awards? Mm, good question. Because we're independent. Right. There you go. Okay. You dig what I'm saying? So you miss out on things. So I'm like, yo, I'm going to take care of us regardless. I've been doing that. You know what I mean? You're like, you, you, you ain't never had to pay for nothing on a trip. You ain't never had to nothing. Mm. And the sad part about it is that he's trying to take credit and saying that the whole barbershop idea, the whole concept you're doing, he said was all his idea. You just the one. That's who a lie, bro. If you look at the first, the first interview, space was not part of the team. Mm. Knowledge was shooting the episodes. Like we had the location, we had the the idea, the concept, everything. Mm. It wasn't like why why would you even try to claim that? But then think about it. These guys been off the show for two months. For two months, you've been doing your own thing. You ain't been seeing the same type of views 
but now you talk about me. You start slandering me, and now you lit. Mm. Right, real talk. Got that shit. And I always say, I don't think they lit. This is a, a temporary high they're getting right now. I, I assure right. you that they're going to be irrelevant in the next couple of uh, couple of months because, to be honest with you, they got to say your name to be even be relevant right now. And it, it is what yeah. it is, you know? And to be honest, I don't even think people noticed it was off the show. Listen, listen, yo, Matt, I lied to you not. When I watched the show that it was on, I said, "Oh shit! I didn't know that. I didn't know they was off the show. I didn't even know. I didn't know." And the, the, what, what was the young lady that was started off on your show? What was her name again? Uh, Misfit. Misfit. When she decided to part ways with you, I never heard of no controversy. She never slandered you. Right. Talk, nobody. Been. Nobody said, "Oh, he was he wasn't paying us or nothing like that." Nobody said that. Nobody said that. But now it's like, well, you you see these people left and these people left. You know how many people was in those chairs after Misfit and Knowledge? Mm, bunch of people right i was looking for the right team i thought that i found it but i guess people had their own agendas and here we are wow wow that's what's up before i let you go man i know you're a busy man do you ever think it, would you ever get back in the battle rap arena uh again now that you're doing this podcast and stuff or are you retired i mean i, I definitely want to do something for a battle rap but for me right now i know how you know, my last couple of battles, the slander was just a little too much for me. Mm. And I felt like, you know, I get on stage, I try to tell the truth. Like when I battled, when I battled Geechee Gotti, I broke down the whole Rico thing and I warned people about it. I like to tell the truth. I like to tell the truth. I take pride in that. My girl knows if she wants us to fight the whole week, call me a liar. Is it true, Jen? That's very true. Absolutely. <laughs> very true. Right, right. You know right. what I mean? I, I, I get a kick out of being a, an honest person because, I, for one, I feel like it's part part of um our manifestation power. The more you tell the truth, the more your projections become accurate. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Yes. It's like, it's like you become in sync with the universe if you can tell it how it is. And everybody got their own truth, but I try to keep mine as factual as possible. So it, it was just disturbing to see these guys just spitting out lies. And not one of them, not one time said, we violated contract. We created a show just like his show. So there's no truth to what they were saying about. You said that you said that they hold no weight in the show. They hold no weight. That's a lie. Weight. That's okay. a lie. Okay. The, um, the whole you just the editor. That's a lie. Mm. It, it, I've been frustrated with space for how many times have I fought with him over not answering, not answering the phone or reading a text and not we had episodes uh, Steven Jackson um who else it, 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 I'm, there's a whole say it again Mike Geronimo Mike Geronimo where I can't reach Joe space Budden. Joe Budden I can't reach space he's not he's reading the messages but he's not responding so why is he calling your girl and not calling you though? I'm confused. He, you say he disrespects you. Again, like this is a if, if I would be embarrassed if he released the screenshots of how many messages I send him and he ignores them. That would make you look better though, respectfully. That would make you look better. I mean, but but even so, in in these in these messages, I'm like, yo, space, come on, my nigga. Like three years, bro. Like talk to me. Wow. Talk to me. If you got an issue, talk to me. Yeah. Well, I got to find out through this person, that person, that person, that person. And you just quiet around me. You just. Wow. Yeah. It don't make sense. Like, that's not how men operate. You know what I'm saying? Like, no offense to you, Jen, but like, if Jen got a problem, it, it might come out in, yo, why you won't break your plate? Why you want to, you know what I mean? It might come out another way. It's passive, not. not so much passive but she's not mm -hmm. passive aggressive because she's from east new york like she's she's oh, a goodness. different she's a different type of species right but but with him it was like why do i have to pull teeth to find out what's going on with you mm. why why when i got situations on the line you don't want to answer rather than just tell me what it is right so it was like he was holding the show hostage and the more there were times where I wanted to bring in another cameraman. There were times where I had to, where he was out of he was out of town. I would tell him, yo, if 
find a replacement, train somebody. I'll still pay you for the episodes. Space didn't shoot Vlad, the Vlad episode. He didn't oh shoot goodness. the Omar Epps episodes, and I still paid him for them. I still paid him because I wanted him to be comfortable enough to say, okay, I could find somebody that if I'm not around, he could shoot. And he never did it. Mm. He never did it. Wow. Just to be able to, to 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 shut my shit down when he felt like it. Wow. And as much as like people around me was like, yo, this ain't good for business. This ain't good for business. I still tried to get him to get to a, a point where like, yo, Space, just talk to me, man. Just talk to me. It's three years, bro. Three years. Yeah, but you know you you can't you can't force people to change this change is an inside job right right yeah for what for not this guy is socially awkward though man he he, he he's kind of a weird type of guy and i remember we had a debate on the show and, and it seems he's like he's, he's comfortable around goofies he wants That's the thing with him the thing about him now is that he wants to be in front of the camera i don't know if you know his history but he's been trying to do this podcast thing for a while now and he failed every single time. Nobody wants to watch him. You know what I mean? But, but, and but that's another thing, bro. I'm, I'm like, yo, space. You might as well just sit in the chair. Mm. But that require that would require you to train someone to do your job. Mm. And he never did it. Never did it. Right. So if it if it is a situation where, all right, you saw you saw this this thing growing, and now you want to be the man. Say that. Say that. Say, say, yo, I conspired with these two guys and we went and created a show that they're doing the same exact thing we do on my expert opinion because we wanted to be lit. Wow. We wanted to have our own shit. Cool. That's the reason you're not here no more. Wow. Real talk. You did an interview with Methamir, right? And I don't know if you remember the time. He's in the background with the cameras and everything like that. He was asking the artist questions off off the microphone. I don't know if you remember that. And I was yeah. No, he did that plenty of times. I'm like to myself, like, wait a minute, why is the cameraman asking questions and shit like that? I didn't understand that. But but here's the thing, like, all right, you have your own show. Even though we had a, a exclusivity arrangement, I knew okay, you got pulling space. Keep doing pulling space, bro. I know you want to get your bread to or whatever. Keep doing pulling space. That's cool. Cause you had that years before me. That's true. But when you see my plat platform skyrocketing, and all of a sudden you're looking at me like, like why, bro? Jealousy, yo, jealousy is a motherfucker, man. I'm be honest with you, bro. I know it might sound cliche, but jealousy is a motherfucker, man. If, if, somebody, if somebody sees you doing what they want to do, they have this hatred in their heart, man, and yeah. they can't they can't even hide their emotions, man, because they wish they was in your position, man. So. What yeah. I would tell you, man, is don't let these people distract you, man. Keep doing your I'm thing. not, bro. I know who I am. Right. I know what I've accomplished. As much as they could sit in that room and act like I had minimal con contribution to this shit, I kept this shit going. When COVID was going on, that was me going live every night, connecting with the subscribers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was nobody else. I remember you so going... I so I'll never, I've been in too many situations where other people will dim your light to make theirs brighter. Hey, yo, I'm Matt, never going to do that. Matt, I remember you going live in your living room, just talking to the people. It was no right. school, nothing. You was in your living room talking to the people. Read, read between the lines. You got to read between. Different. You know what I mean? I might bring that back. I might bring that back. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. But it, it's just unfortunate, man. And I, and I wish these guys the best. But don't slander me to get some clout. Don't do that. Right. I took care of y'all. I right. took care of y'all. If there was any issues, you knew what the issue was. And you need to get on, get in front of that camera and say, well, this was the issue. And that's why maybe this payment was late or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But you knew. Mm. You knew. I didn't know what y'all was doing. I had the feeling. I used to walk in the shop after a while and be like, yo, when y'all niggas going to let me in the other group chat? Oh yeah, and they would yeah. laugh and be like, "Ah, oh, you know what?" But there was another group chat. I heard you say that the flip, yeah, yeah. So it is what it is. If you guys wanted to do your own thing, you got you had two months of doing your own thing, and you wasn't getting no numbers. 
now all of a sudden you want to slander me and say, oh, we left because of money. No, you left because you violated the contract. Mm. Oh, map got 2.7. Stop pocket watching. Wow. You ain't even accurate. Wow. Wow. It's foul shit. Yeah. And anybody that's around them need to know. Like these how these this is how these niggas move. Yeah. yeah. Yo, I need a hundred grand to, and you you get your equipment back. Yo, oh, you're trying to get me in trouble. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. He's not stupid. He knew exactly where where I was gonna where my mind was gonna go first. He's he was, not stupid. He was trying to OJ you, bro. He was trying to OJ you. Uh, trying to set me up. <laughs> trying to set me up. He, I guess he figured uh, if I survive, I could sue him. Wow. I can get everything. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. But yeah. we ain't going there. We not going there, bro. I'm, I'm glad you're not in that space anymore, man. I'm glad you're not. Yeah, I went, I went to B&H. I blew the bag in B&H. Got all the shit back. Cool, nigga. I that is that that's what it took to get you out of my life. Fine. Yeah. And I'm glad Fine. you focused, man. I heard you talk about your four boys and how they, they don't have to do the things that you once used to have to do growing up in order to survive. Yeah. No, I got I got two boys and I got three girls. But yeah, they don't have to do this shit. Right, right. right. They don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Right. Nice, man. They good. And and that's and that's basically where the true loyalty lies to your family. For all of us. Right. Yeah. Now, if we could get together and we could create a situation where we're feeding all of our family, that's perfect. Mm. But unfortunately, some people just can't see you win and, and not feel like, yo, I need to be at the same level as him. Right. Esso used to sit in the shop all the time and be like, oh, artists are not businessmen. They're not businessmen. And I'd be sitting there looking at him like, but you work for me, nigga. Mm. <laughs> Dumb, dumb, not the horn, not the horn. Yeah, the horn. Hit the, <laughs> the horn, horn on that. Horn, Hit the horn on that. <laughs> and, and when and when he and when he sent his fake agents at me to give me a fake revolt deal. Wow. And I and I peeped the situation and I stepped around it and got to revolt. They were like, "We don't know those guys. Stop wow. talking to them." Wow. That's shiesty, yo. That's crazy. This, this is how these guys are operating. But understand, they're industry niggas. They've never been in a situation with, where you have to have true under, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, true loyalty to anything. Wow. Because they look at it as get in, get what you could get, and then snake the nigga. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. These niggas got in. They thought they had enough juice to go do their own thing. They went. Oh, shit. We only getting 500 views. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Damn. I guess it wasn't us. What can we do? Let's slander math. Now we getting the views. Damn. It's but not once did any of these niggas say, we violated the contract. That's what happened. We jumped ship too early. Way too early. Way too early. Too early. And I'm and I'm glad for that because every day I pray for loyalty. That might not be important to some people, but I get down on my knees and I pray for loyalty. Wow. And I'm guessing God heard my cries and He was like, "Yo, you see these three niggas? Yeah, get them out of there." Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like how you even cleared up the fact that there's a lot of people love to say when somebody gets big and, and gets popping and some Illuminati shit and some sacrifice shit, and you made it clear that there's no involvement in that. When you said that, sometimes you got to sacrifice somebody. This means that you got to get them off your team in order for you to grow. And I love that analogy you use when it comes to space goals because I'm not gonna lie, watching you or it's flip and how at the end you got kind of emotional. I kind of felt that you genuinely really wanted it to work with the guy you really want to help these people out but these people had ill intention towards you and i think that's so messed up that you had a good heart but these people at the end of the day didn't appreciate what you tried to do for them man. it's crazy but 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 that's what happened when you have a good heart people would love to to paint you as something else because mm. they don't understand it mm. they don't understand like why is he thinking why, not, why is he paying me for episodes and i'm not there Mm. Wow. 
I'm like, you gotta ask Jen, like, I was messed up behind this shit for weeks. I could tell. That wasn't no fake emotions that I seen. I could tell. Yeah, no, that was tough. Yeah, I could tell you hurt, man. You know, I don't blame you, man. But you know? but it but it is what it is. And I will never let somebody dim my light and say, yo, it's not him. It was us. Okay. Wow. You know what that sound like? You know what that sound like to me, right? Tell me. I heard motherfuckers saying they made hove. Made hove say, okay, so make another hove. Bang. Don't do like that. Shit like that. Shit like that. That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. And before Simple I let you know, before I get you, know, I, I gotta ask a question. There was a um episode that Shampoo did on his show, right? This is months ago. And yeah. he was crying. He said, Man. I don't know why Space Ghost don't want to ever have. I'm sorry. He said, I don't know why Matt Hoffa don't want me up there, man. He was on my show, man. I want, I want to be up there, blah, blah, blah. So now I got to put you on the spot. All right. Would you ever yeah. have, would you ever have Shampoo ever come on your show as a guest or not? not Never. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Do all my years. And you know what? This, this probably should have been a sign to me. He said many things about me on Pooh and Space. Facts. And people will bring it back to me. Space never brought it back to me. People will be like, yo, you saw this? What's up with this? Why he talking about you like this? And I'll be Facts. like, yo, Space, what's up with your man? We building something over here. Why, why is he trying to throw a monkey wrench in this shit by slandering me? <laughs> and he'd be like, oh, you know uh, 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 he just like to talk. I know about him. He likes to talk. And then when, when niggas show up, like, talk that talk now, he gets on the phone, 911, hello? Wow. Hello? And I'm not going to have you come on my platform and say some crazy shit that niggas wow. going to be calling my phone for and I got a DEFCON 5 try to figure out how this shit work. In a way, him and, him and Heineken are kind of similar because Heineken used to say shit like that. Mm. And wow. we would just bleep him like, yo, go bleep this nigga, man. Mm. What is he talking about? Mm. Wow. That's real like, Even in the last episode they was on was the Yayo episode. And on that shit, this nigga said, Yayo, you know when I met you, right? Yayo was like, when, 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 when I met you? He was like, yo, you met, I met you on the day that Mickey Fax said, Remy, said he used to write for Remy Ma. Wow. We Remy's the homie. We had her on the show twice. Mm -hmm. Why you why you saying stuff like that? So, to sabotage you. That's why. You know what I mean? To try to mess up relationships. And Mickey Fax calls me up like, yo, bro, what's up with this guy? That's not what I said. I said we used to write together. Mm. Why is he saying that? But for these niggas, it's it's views and attention. For me, it's a message. Like I don't oh yo 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 the yo, yo shit that's gonna be gold that's gonna be gold yeah but I don't like that motherfuckers couldn't just talk real talk real talk no I'm telling you the internet is gonna love it yeah I'm sure they will but nigga the goal is to show niggas yo we can communicate and have differences of opinions and it not be an issue I want the real stories right. You know, the funny part about that interview is that he was telling you don't bring up game, right? And when you stop bringing up game, he kept on bringing up game. Did you notice that shit or am I tripping? <laughs> yeah, that's, why, that's why I fell back. And I was like, oh, so you, you just want to answer the questions in, on your time. Right. I was All right, cool. like, what the hell? Cool. What but shout out to Yayo. Shout right. out to Yayo. Shout out to Yayo, man. Shout out to Yayo. Uh -huh. I saw, um, one thing about Esso was saying is that he said, if you do get a deal, like say you get a deal with Revolt, even though I know it's not all ashes and stone yet, he said, you better not use his likeness and everything like that. What's your thoughts on that? My thoughts on that is um, any any company that has hollered at me weren't interested in old episodes. If I did negotiate a deal for old episodes, in my mind, I wanted to give the guys more money. Mm, okay but that's fine that's fine if that's where you at with it now that's fine mm. that's fine that's fine don't use your image and likeness you signed the contract giving me rights to to use your image and likeness it's like these guys talk about business but they never read their contract that right. just don't make no sense 
You're such a businessman. Why didn't you know that you was violating your contract? Why didn't you inform the cameraman that he was violating his contract, not communicating with me? Right, right. Hey, yo, man, now that you really kind of in depth in, in the industry and everything like that, even though you was been in there for a while, but kind of underground, how fake is the industry? I'm always hearing these celebrities telling me how fake these people are. Now that you are in the mix with all these A-list celebrities, not without saying names, is it really fake as they say it is, or it just um, I, I feel like picking people pick and choose. I, I, I said this on a record. I said, don't expect real love if the love that you give is fake. Mm. So there's a lot of people in the industry that show me real love. And I show them real love. You know what I mean? And then there's the people who just say anything to you. So I'll say anything to them. I play people by their own rules. Right. If you a snake, I'm going to bite you first. You dig what I'm saying? Mm. Yes. Yes, absolutely. so 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 there, there's real love in the industry, but if you carry yourself as a fake nigga, you can't expect real love from nobody. And real talk. And, and once a nigga show you fake love, then you know what category to put him in. Real talk. For, for my audience, I'm reading the chat and I'm reading the even cash app. Shout out to um Logic, John Logic. He's donating, and everybody says they believe you. They know that you paid um, that you paid everybody and took care of everybody. So. I don't even see any anybody negative even saying anything negative, saying that you they did you did anything wrong. So what I'm saying to you is that, man, I, even though I know it's, I don't think it's bothering you as much as I thought it was, but at the end of the day, man, listen, you're winning, keep on winning. I'm I'm rooting for you, as you know. I, I even our conversation, you could tell that I've been supporting you and watching you for years, man. So salute, salute, salute. Keep on, keep on doing your thing, man. I, I'm, I'm proud of you, um, and I and I can't wait to see what you got in store next. I can't wait to that next episode. You said kind of got lit. And it is what it is, man. I hope even the, the next contract you sign after this will be more and more and more, man. I want you to be able to get everything that you ever imagined and dreamed of, man. And I'll be rooting for you along the way, man. I'll be right behind you one day, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm and, yeah, and you and you know what? With that with that type of attitude, you will. I got here showing love. Right. There's some people that get lit off of drama, but again, drama is like a trend. Mm. Once somebody else pop up and they more about the drama than you are. They're just going to leave you and follow them. Wow. But showing love. There's places that my friends tell me, Matt, you shouldn't be going there by yourself. I show love. So I'm able to walk. I'm not stupid. <laughs> Certain places I'm not going to go. But for the most part, when I'm out in these streets, I get love because I show love. Nice, nice. Did you and, get a and, regard, and regardless to, to whatever happened between uh, me and those guys, I saw something special in Esso. I saw something special in Heineken. I saw something special in Space Ghost. It's just these guys was not ready to go to that level. There's still immaturities that they have that they haven't figured out. Like, yo, bro, you're, you're feeding your family is more important than trying to flex not answering a text message. Right. Building something is more important than ignoring niggas. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you oh, want to oh. show where guests come on. You might not want to talk about yourself all the time. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, one before I let you go, you're so humble. Thank you for coming on behind the bar. I'm a small channel with six thousand subscribers. You didn't have to do this, but I appreciate you giving YouTubers an opportunity. Like, I'll never forget you had on. A few months ago, you had on a YouTuber, a big YouTuber on your channel, Hassan Campbell. And I know you probably got like right. a little backlash for having him on there. But somebody like me, I salute you for doing that because even though we're just on a level of YouTube, it shows that you give smaller people an opportunity to go ahead and um, be able to tell you. I, I, I never considered Hassan a small person. When you could go live and you have as much people as Madison Square Garden can hold oh. watching you, nah. Nah, Hassan has a powerful message. I just feel like he gets caught caught up in the drama sometimes. Right. You know what I mean? Right. right. And then you may have six thousand subscribers now, but shit, I had six thousand subscribers at one point. Real talk. You know, Real it's talk. about it's about finding your niche, um, and always always being honest with your supporters. They'll appreciate that. We live in a world where people are capping left and right. You go on Instagram, 
90 percent of them pictures them smiles is cat wow wow you feel me so if you could give people a real and and get them to appreciate that bro you're golden you're doing better than a lot of guys out here some of these guys I, I see uh videos go up with motherfuckers talking about me and fake facts and all that shit. you're not gonna go nowhere mm. you're not gonna go nowhere yeah, you might get a couple of my haters to chime in and be like, yeah, talk about them. But that's it. Haters don't support. So while you doing all this drama shit, the only thing you attracting is haters. And wow. haters don't support. Right. You know what I mean? I agree. I agree. I don't know if you remember this. When I first started my YouTube channel, I had a battle rap show. And I had rappers come on here and battle rapping. And you pulled up in the live chat. Do you remember that or no? You probably don't remember that. Hold on. Who was battling? It was regular people on YouTube, though. I, I just did, like, a, a small YouTube battle rap show, right? And, and I saw you in the live chat. I said, yo, man, I, this is what I said to you. I said, yo, Matt Hoffa, I'll give you $100 if you come and pull up and rap for us. You said, $100? Nigga, I get paid. <laughs> you said, I get paid 20, 30 racks a show, no, nigga. But, but, but look, if you do something well, you should get paid for it. Right, right, right. If you do something well, you should get paid for it. It'd be, it'd be terrible to have people out here that's – that's Jordan level and Kobe level, and they ain't getting a check for it. You know what I'm saying? Right. You do something well, you should get paid for it. The The dream for me has always been, um, I heard this saying when I was a kid, and it stuck with me. If you can find a job that you love, you'll never have to work a day never. in your life. Never, ever, ever. And that's a fact. It, it won't feel like work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Speaking of dream job, what's your dream interview? My dream interview is Oprah. Oprah? I thought you were gonna say Hove. Okay, Oprah. Okay, shout out to Oprah. No, shout no, shout out, shout out to Hove, but Oprah? Right. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I you know get what, it. You know what she's been through? I get it. I get it. That's that's is that's incredible. You know what right. I mean? Right, right. And Hove also, of course, Hove is up there. Right. You know, right. uh you, you grew up in Marcy, Marcy Projects. And now you're a billionaire. Like you, you got enough money to, 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 to affect the economy with with one move. Mm. Like right. that's different. I get that's it. Different. I totally get it. I totally get it, man. And yo, you said something with new levels and new devils, man. And I'm not gonna mention any names because I'm not like that type of person. But you know, you went through some allegations earlier this year, and I'm so glad that that shit got up, got out the way and nobody believed that shit and and now look yeah, at facts that shit, that facts yeah and, and look what happened after that yeah look at you yeah yeah we'll talk yeah she yeah and, and it was it was my ability to keep a calm head in that situation because I, I you know i could have wilded out yeah you know what i mean real talk but being i kept a calm head and i said you know what i'm gonna get through this this is what my life coach has been talking about new levels new devils I'm about to reach another level. There you go. And this ain't going to be the first time something happened to you the second time. It's going to keep on coming. The bigger you get, the more haters you're going to get. And you're going to and I and I'll be fully prepared. There you go. Fully prepared because I understand it. Listen, if you look at life like a um like a video game. You take the emotion out of it because sometimes our emotions hold us back. We get we get stuck on things mm. because it's fueling our emotions and our emotions you know, emotions kind of cloud your judgment sometimes. Mm. You know what I mean? But if right. you looked at it like a video game, like if you had a controller in your hand and you could see your body and something happened, you would know exactly what to do. Mm. Real talk. You feel me? Real so talk. Sometimes it's it's hard to, to maintain that mindset, but once you get that type of understanding, you can see your way through anything. Right. Right. Nice. Right. Man, listen, man. It's been an honor having you on behind the bar, man. Listen, this conversation is great. You know what I mean? Um, this is a good look for my channel. So you, you actually helped me out today. And you know, it is what it is, man. I, I'm gonna I'm give I'm gonna give you a hint. Um chop this up. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> chop it up. Absolutely. The money at. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Sure. Thank you so All much right. for the show. Salute. Salute, bro. Salute. Peace, peace, peace.